Well, if you look around baseball, you see not as much movement as you would expect. It is sort of a buyer's market out there at a free agency, yet the Pirates aren't buying much. Daniel Nava comes in, Joe Musgrove, okay, those are the highlight of the offseason where you watch other teams in the division. Yesterday, you Darvish, who's going to make twice as much as the entire Pirate rotation uh, will this year in one year. And then you see Ozuna, Marcelo Ozuna, one of the best outfitters go to St. Louis. You saw what Milwaukee did. Ron, what do the Pirates do? They haven't done anything to counter this. What is your overall tenor here going into spring training? Well, I mean, how can you be positive about it? You know, and I know what Huntington and Coonley and Nutting want us to believe, but how do you be positive when your three competitors in your division, which you weren't even close to last year, all add, all get stronger, and you add Daniel Nava? I mean, I, I, no offense to him, but Daniel Nava? Uh, I mean, uh, you trade away Cole, you trade away McCutcheon, and, that, and they say, well, we're still got as much chance to win as we did last year. Maybe that's so. They weren't going to win it with those guys. I guess it's the old Ralph Kiner thing, uh, Branch Rickey. We can finish last with you. We can finish last without you. I see them headed no better than fourth place in that division. I mean, let's just deal in facts. I think those are the most damning things of all. They signed Daniel Nava. Okay, great. Right now, the owner and the team are considering court action against the Sport and Exhibition Authority about carpeting for the ballpark. And granted, it's their prerogative to take that action. But this is a franchise whose fans know that it's a soft market out there right now. It's a buyer's market. And they're squabbling over an amount that you wouldn't even be able to get like a fourth outfielder for for one year. How are people supposed to think that this is anything other than sort of a... a Rinky-dink, for lack of a better term, operation. It's ridiculous. It's, not, it's one thing for the Cubs to do what they did. We know in this town they can't compete financially with that team. We know that the Cardinals are sort of a different beast. When the Brewers, who were supposed to be rebuilding, what, last year, are already back in the mix and adding pieces and making a run again, how, if you're the Pirates' front office, can you look yourselves in the mirror and tell fans what they've continued to try to say, which is, we're not rebuilding. We see this team as having a lot of similarities Team, team. That's the ridiculous part. It'll be even fun, more fun when the Brewers sign someone like Jake Arrieta and uh, basically make sure that everybody knows. For Darby. Ex Paul. Exactly. They uh, were very much you, in the mix for Darby. Yeah, you guys are completely forgetting, though, that they did get Colin Moran and, you know, Arnold Slick from Turtle Crick or whatever his name is, the guy they got from San Francisco. So they did add something. Now, Colin Moran, I keep hearing all the Pirate apologists tell us they're gonna, he's going to hit 25 to 30 home runs. I'm thinking, you mean over the next five years, or are we talking about just this year? I, I just think the Pirates, if, it, fans would be a lot happier with it if they were just honest about it and stopped all this nonsense about how, oh, we're trying to compete. No, no, it's fiction that we're not trying to compete. We're not all dumb. The best part is people complaining and saying, well, the Brewers are trading away a bunch of their prospects to get some of these <laughs> guys. Who cares? They, replen they did that for CC Sabathia, and they replenished, and look where they are now. And Again, in markedly better shape than the Pirates. Real quick, one question before we go. We have 90 seconds. Barry Bonds, number in San Francisco, is going to be retired. Ron, do you like that move? No, I think it stinks. You're honoring a cheater by, by retiring his jersey number. I get it. I, I, that's how fans are. If he was in Pittsburgh, we'd probably want to retire it too. If he had done what he had done here, as he did in San Francisco, I think it's awful. I really do. I think it sends a horrible message. I think it's great. <laughs> of course, I think you and I always disagree about Bonds. I think it's great. For, to me, uh, he's a guy that's maybe the best player of all time. I'm not so, arguing with you on uh, that. I just think that the thing about it is I look at him as the best player of an era where everybody was cheating. Everyone's cheated throughout every era of baseball in some form or fashion. There's been inequality as far as the level of competition and how games were being contested. He's the best player I've seen in my lifetime by a, a lot, a magnitude of a, of a lot. And his run from a 1 to 4, I don't care if he was taking horse tranquilizers with quaaludes mixed in before every at bat, it was the most riveting spectacle in sports. I'm happy they're recognizing the greatness that the, pro, the Baseball Hall of Fame refuses to. Yeah, and, and the league knew it, and they did not much. Uh, to stop it. And they knew it was a good spectacle with McGuire and Sosa and Bonds and all those guys. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Kevin Stalling. Should he return next year or not? They're 0-13. They got blown out today in front of 4,000 people. That's an issue. We'll talk about it next.